When I finished grad school in computer science, I went to art school to study painting. A lot of people seemed surprised that someone interested in computers would also be interested in painting. They seemed to think that hacking and painting were very different kinds of work, that hacking was cold, precise, and methodical, and that painting was the frenzied expression of some primal urge. Both of these images were wrong. Hacking and painting have a lot in common. In fact, of all the different types of people I've known, hackers and painters are among the most alike. I've never liked the term computer science. The main reason I don't like it is that there's no such thing. Computer science is a grab bag of tenuously related areas thrown together by an accident of history, like Yugoslavia. At one end, you have people who are really mathematicians, but call what they're doing computer science so that they can get DARPA grants. In the middle, you have people working on something like natural history of computers, studying the behavior of algorithms for routing data through networks, for example. And then at the other extreme, you have the hackers, who are trying to write interesting software and for whom computers are just a medium of expression, as concrete is for architects or paint is for painters. It's as if mathematicians, physicists, and architects all have to be in the same department. What hackers and painters have in common is that they're both makers. Along with composers, architects, and writers, what hackers and painters are trying to do is make good things. They're not doing research per se, though, if in the course of trying to make good things they discover some new techniques, so much the better. If universities and research labs keep hackers from doing the kind of work they want to do, perhaps the place for them is in companies. Unfortunately, most companies won't let hackers do what they want either. Universities and research labs force hackers to be scientists, and companies force them to be engineers. So one way to build great software is to start your own startup. There are two problems with this though. One is that in a startup, you have to do so much besides write software. The other problem with startups is that there is not much overlap between the kind of software that makes money and the kind that's interesting to write. I think the answer to this problem, in the case of software, is a concept known to nearly all makers. The day job. This phrase began with musicians who perform at night. More generally, it means that you have one kind of work you do for money and another one for love. Nearly all makers have day jobs early in their careers. Painters and writers notoriously do. If you're lucky, you can get a day job that's closely related to your real work. Musicians often seem to work in record stores. A hacker working on some programming language or operating system might likewise be able to get a day job using it. What else can painting teach us about hacking? Um. One thing we can learn, or at least confirm, from the example of painting is how to learn to hack. You learn to paint mostly by doing it. Ditto for hacking. Most hackers don't learn to hack by taking college courses in programming. They learn to hack by writing programs of their own at age 13. Even in college classes, you learn to hack mostly by hacking. The other way makers learn is from examples. For a painter, a museum is a reference library of techniques. For hundreds of years, it has been part of the traditional education of painters to copy the works of great masters because copying forces you to look closely at the way a painting is made. It's unrealistic to expect that the specifications of a program will be perfect. You're better off if you admit this up front and write programs in a way that allows specifications to change on the fly. Everyone by now presumably knows about the danger of premature optimization. I think we should be just as worried about premature design, deciding too early what a program should do. The right tools can help us avoid this danger. A good programming language should, like oil paint, make it easy to change your mind. Dynamic typing is a win here because you don't have to commit to specific data representations up front. But the key to flexibility, I think, is to make the language very abstract. The easiest program to change is one that's very short. This sounds like a paradox, but a great painting has to be better than it has to be. For example, when Leonardo painted the portrait of Ginevra de Benci in National Gallery, he put a juniper bush behind her head. In it, he carefully painted each individual leaf. Many painters might have thought, this is just something to put in the background to frame her head. No one will look that closely at it. Not Leonardo. How hard he worked on part of painting didn't depend at all on how closely he expected anyone to look at it. He was like Michael Jordan. 
relentless. The example of painting can teach us not only how to manage our own work, but how to work together. A lot of great art of the past is the work of multiple hands, though there may only be one name on the wall next to it in the museum. As far as I know, when painters worked together on a painting, they never worked on the same parts. It was common for the master to paint the principal figures and for assistants to paint the others and the background. But you never had one guy painting over the work of another. I think this is the right model for collaboration in software too. Don't push it too far. When a piece of code is being hacked by three or four different people, no one of whom really owns it, it will end up being like a common room. It will tend to feel bleak and abandoned and accumulate cruft. The right way to collaborate, I think, is to divide projects into sharply defined modules, each with a definite owner and with interfaces between them that are as carefully designed and, if possible, as articulated as programming languages. Like painting, most software is intended for a human audience. And so hackers, like painters, must have empathy to do really great work. You have to be able to see things from the user's point of view. Empathy is probably the single most important difference between a good hacker and a great one. Some hackers are quite smart, but when it comes to empathy are practically solipsists. It's hard for such people to design great software because they can see things from the user's point of view. Part of what software has to do is explain itself. So to write good software, you have to understand how little users understand. They're going to walk up to the software with no preparation, and it had better do what they guess it will, because they're not going to read the manual. The best system I've ever seen in this respect was the original Macintosh in 1985. It did what software almost never does, it just worked. So, if hacking works like painting and writing, is it cool? After all, you only get one life. You might as well spend it working on something great. Unfortunately, the question is hard to answer. There is always a big time lag in prestige. It's like light from a distant star. Painting has prestige now because of great work people did 500 years ago. At the time, no one thought these paintings were as important as they were today. So while I admit that hacking doesn't seem as cool as painting now, we should remember that painting itself didn't seem as cool in glory days as it does now. What we can say with some confidence is that these are the glory days of hacking. In most fields, the great work is done early on. The paintings made between 1430 and 1500 are still unsurpassed. Shakespeare appeared just as professional theatre was born and pushed the medium so far that every playwright since has had to live in his shadow. Albrecht Dürer did the same thing with engraving and Jane Austen with the novel. Over and over we see the same pattern. A new medium appears and people are so excited about it that they explore most of its possibilities in the first couple generations. Hacking seems to be in this phase now. Painting was not, in Leonardo's time, as cool as his work helped make it. How cool hacking turns out to be will depend on what we can do with this new medium.